Right, here we go. Everybody ready? Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode five of Behind the Scenes, when we sit here and have a little go at sort of picking apart what happened in this week's episode of the Great British Sewing Bee. So as usual, we have our regular friends here. We've got Alistair from the house of Alistair. So say hello, Alistair. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Samantha um, from Just Bold Fabrics. Hello, Samantha. We've got myself, a quilter. And then today we have a special guest joining us. We've got Sarah Kaywood. So say hello, Sarah, and tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Well, my name is Sarah Kaywood. Thank you so much for having me on Behind the Seams. I'm very excited. I'm an ambassador for Create and Craft. I've done various bits and pieces for the channel, uh, most notably creating content on my lives with my children, which is why I'm here this week. Sarah Payne will have more on that in just a minute. Um, and I'm not a sewing bee by any stretch, but uh, as Miss Payne will know, I am in awe of anyone who does. And one day, one day, I promise to myself that I will be able to sew a t-shirt or at least a tote bag. So that's me. I'm, I'm, I'm here to sort of be in awe of you guys and pass judgment on all the kiddie stuff. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for joining us, Sarah. It gives us a different perspective, which is always Pleasure. nice. So, because this week was Children's Week, so all of the challenges were focused around the little ones in your life. Um, our first challenge was the pattern challenge, which was a cute little romper suit. And obviously they could choose from the haberdashery, they could choose the fabrics that they wanted. And they did mention using lightweight fabrics. And this did actually bring a people, couple of people, couple of people down. So I do have a picture of, in my very high tech way, these are the finished romper suits that we had from our eight contestants. So first of all, um, Alistair, obviously uh, they were making romper suits this week and they had to think about the fabrics. Pretty much everybody had problems with the poppers. What were your thoughts on that when you could see them doing the those little bits. The thing with the, um, with the poppers, <clears throat> I hate these plastic poppers. They're, 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 they are not my favourite um, thing. They have their place in the world, but they're not my favourite. Um, and also that very famous German brand who produces them, um, they're, they're very much suited for lightweight fabrics. Now, when they were talking about doing rompers, they were talking about something that needed to be not just lightweight, but it had to be something that was um, robust because obviously the children are doing a lot of romping. Um, so I think that I think if they had used metal poppers, I know they said they were child friendly, but for instance, all the baby grows that I see in um, department stores, a lot of them have the, the little um, round metal ones. The metal ones, when you press them in, actually go in far better and you can really be quite um, rough with them. But I think the main challenge for them was they didn't apply enough pressure to actually push the, the male and the female part together to actually adhere. Um, so even though you might use a slightly heavier weight fabric, with a bit of force, you can actually get those in. But I think when you just see them putting them in the, in the moulds and then they're just crimping them, they're not crimping them hard enough. So I think that's why a lot of them were falling um, off. So Sam, which was your favorite out of out of that lot? Were you were you drawn to the African wax fabrics? Or uh, absolutely, that? yes, absolutely beautiful. But I was, I was also drawn to the dinosaurs, you know? Mm. Yeah, very nice. And I like the alignment and the placement of, um, many of the sewers did quite well, didn't they, Patrick? pointed out eight were pretty good. Unfortunately, Raphael, um, he forgot to sew his band or his gathers around correctly, didn't he? But I was very, very impressed what came out um, and what, what we'd seen. Um, yeah, so yeah, I really like the African wax fabric. And by the way, Raphael's uh, fabric was African as well, because of course it's 100% cotton, it's breathable, it's durable. It, it's just beautiful to work with. I mean, I would say that, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so Sarah, which was your favorite? Was there something in there that you, you could have imagined sort of Hunter or Autumn 
in mm. at that age. It's funny because I um I did have a favourite, but it wasn't the practical one. It was one that looked the nicest. But then I think that's, you know, that we're all guilty of doing, of wearing deeply impractical clothes because they look lovely. And I actually really liked Adam's mix. But as soon as he started working with that denim or whatever, I was like, oh, that you can't. I mean, there's a reason the only garments my children ever wore in denim were dungarees. You just wouldn't put a child in a romper because it is too heavy. And I thought that the production team were a bit mean to give them those rubbish poppers because even me as a non-sewer took one look and went well they're cheap and nasty that's not going to work they're going to unpop as soon as a child lifts its leg or starts to crawl um andrew's uh i, I, I don't think andrew has children because he it was white and blue no one puts a toddler in white they're filthy after that it's been on for like 30 seconds i mean literally dribble you know whatever they've got their hands on or goes in their mouth goes all down them um but my favourite one, I think, was Fari's. I absolutely loved it. And that thing that circle in the middle made that look like an Iron Man thing. Did you not think the beauty? I was oh, like, oh, yes. it's fabulous. Loved that. And I did love the placement of the dinosaur as well. So that was Rebecca, I think, wasn't it? So those two really spoke to me. But I did love Adam's three-way. But I love patchwork, as you know, Miss Payne, because I'm always, like, crushing on you. <laughs> Well, thank you. <laughs> but I, I agree. I did very much like um, uh, Adam's outfit. I did very much like that indeed. And it was actually Serena who won. But hers had a white background as well. She had the white with the lemons. And they, they yes. pulled uh, uh, Andrew up on it, but they didn't pull her up on it. And I think sometimes it seems there's a little bit of favouritism going on there. Mm. And I have to agree with that because all they kept pointing out is what a good sewer she is. Well, everybody else is a good sewer. Yes, almost. they wouldn't be there uh, there otherwise. And I think actually uh, we had Serena who won and Rebecca who came second. And then Andrew and Adina were at the bottom there. So um, I thought they were a bit harsh with, with Andrew because of his choice of fabric. And it's just, it just struck me as odd. So then we went on to the second challenge, which was the transformation challenge. Now, this was guaranteed to be great fun because it was a fancy dress I, um, outfit <clears throat> excuse me a fancy dress outfit made for kids and you could just let your imagination run wild and some people did and then some people didn't so Sarah what was your favorite of those and which would you have put one of your little munchkins in um, I... I know they're a bit old for it now but what I would they have worn absolutely loved the jellyfish. Now remind me who that was because I've just put jellyfish. Amazing. Yes, uh, oh, the jellyfish Serena. was Serena. It was yeah. Serena? Yes, I absolutely. I thought that was lovely. And I was. Are we allowed to say who came where now? Because I don't want to do. I oh yeah, that's all right. There's, we know there's going to be spoilers. Yeah? Okay. Well, because I, I thought, I thought she was cheated out of being first. I really did. I was like, no. I did love um, Alistair's. It was oh, it's Andrew's crab. I loved the crab. I thought. Oh, look at them! The crab was amazing. I just thought. Listen, I, it's doing this sort of thing would not be my first rodeo. We have we have book week every year, and I have to cobble something together with me glue gun and occasionally a bit of hand sewing, the odd bit. Um, and I thought that looked like you know one of the mums from school had done it. Whereas that, that sounds really mean, it does, doesn't it? Whereas Serena looked like she you'd gone to a proper fancy dress, you know, angels and Bermans, and got it in there. So what I thought one was, but the crab was a was a beautiful idea wasn't it and it was much well, more fun mm. um but those two i, I mean f what was fari doing what I, I just put fish rubbish in my notes apparently it was baby shark but it was i mean ew. well they called no. it silver space it was... fairy no or silver space gnome or something like that like... so sam think... what, was, what was your she favorite baby, she said well, baby to, shark. Be, to be honest with you sarah has spoken to me because i have to agree with sarah I absolutely loved the jellyfish. I loved the colours and the shimmering. and the... She really went to town with that, with her imagination, didn't she? And um, But then again, the engineering of Andrew, you could see he must have some kind of engineering background because he really did kind of build his crab. You know, it really stood out. And, uh, yeah, that was good engineering, to be fair. So I have to agree with Sarah. I'm on her page. 
Okay, no worries. Well, Alistair, what did you think? Um, I thought, <clears throat> again, I actually... Um, I own two minds. I actually really, really love the jellyfish. I thought the, the the execution, sometimes the simple ideas, it doesn't have to know, especially because um, I hear you, Sarah, when you're saying about World Book Day, because literally my son always gave me, you know, one year he wanted to be a koala. So I had to make him a oh. koala costume, you know, and it just was oh, like, bravo, right, bravo. okay. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I actually thought the jellyfish costume should have actually have won. I, um, I did like the crab, but um, I thought the concept and the idea and using um, what they had in front of them um, was a very, very, very clever um, idea of Andrew's. But I thought the execution and actual final styling, I thought that actually I think the jellyfish just tipped it over the edge. I thought she should have actually have, have won um, that one. But one thing I really didn't understand was what was the whole wetsuit thing? I know it was under the sea, but why bother with giving them a wetsuit? It was just, that was just confusing. I thought, what, what, why, why have you incorporated wetsuits? Do you think it was like a, maybe um, an added layer of challenge? Because, I mean, you guys will know, um, maybe they just wanted the drama of a broken needle. Because that neoprene is really, it's really thick, isn't it? So you just wonder if sometimes the production team are going, how can we make this a bit more difficult? How can we sort of trip them up? So maybe it was that. But some of them didn't even really need the neoprene suit, did they? No, none of them. In fact, actually, if you look at any of them, apart from Damien's, the only um, one that was actually visible that actually had the wetsuit because they covered the wetsuit. Yeah. So there was no yeah. point in having it. And nobody would, who on earth, uh, and any mums and dads and uh, or carers are out there will actually identify with this, who would go out or use an old wetsuit for a fancy dress costume? That's quite expensive. <laughs> and, also, and also children give you about... 30 seconds notice before they need to have a wee and that they are not they are weeing in the in the wetsuit aren't they because you yeah. can't get that <laughs> <in the toilet. laughs> it's vest and pants that's what needs to go under a fancy dress vest exactly <laughs> right so brilliant so i think all four of us are actually agreed there that the jellyfish the jellyfish was a thing of beauty structurally um perhaps there wasn't enough sewing in it, maybe, but then, I mean, we were talking about uh, pond noodles, pool noodles for the, for, for the crab. So, um, yeah, I think uh, Andrew, I, I did like his crab, but I thought should have come should have come second on that one. So let's then go on to Garment of the Week, which Garment of the Week was a unisex raincoat. Uh, sorry, no, it's the uh, Made to Measure challenge obviously not the garment of the week. The winner of that is the garment of the week, generally. And um, it was, uh, they had three models. They had two boys and a girl. And they had, was it, I want to say five and a half hours. You can correct was me it five and a half hours? No, it was four and a half hours. Four which and a half. That yeah, confused me because the first challenge they got, I've written it down here, they got four hours for the romper suit. And then to make an actual raincoat, they gave them four and a half. Yeah, that Whereas was that was tight. Previous was. weeks has been like five hours. Why don't they just keep the timing as five hours? Let me just say on that shout, I was so wrong about Andrew, wasn't I? Because I thought he was going to be out, and he made the reversible um, raincoat, which was dead impressive. Actually, I thought um, that he was robbed because we're going to talk about Garment of the Week now. We'll talk about generally these and Garment mm -hmm. of the Week. Because obviously Garment of the Week, the third time in a row, was Barry, which was this one here. Um, but he made the gorgeous... Um, I didn't take Reversible. Yeah, the reversible it was, with it the was red... blue, wasn't it? And then it, it had... Was. It was blue and white stripey and it had red accents, didn't it? It was. Really and the thing is, he had contrasting stitches, which were all yeah. beautiful. Yeah. He had plain fabric. Now, plain fabric, we all know, shows up a mistake or any slight pucker so much more than a busy fabric. If you want to get away with slightly, you know, ropey sewing, go for patterns, don't go for plain. He made it reversible. It was beautiful. And I could see by his face, he thought he got 
garment of the week and he did. Alistair, what did you think? Oh, I've got tons. I've I've got um oh. I've got sort of tons of sort of notes, but I will give you the brief version because oh, Esme yeah. <laughs> Esme's just woken up here. She's just you know, she had a late night again. Um but Damien I thought was good. Um I thought was 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 nice. Um Raphael I thought was boring. I just mm. didn't I just no. Andrew reversible loved, loved, loved. Uh Sienna, um, horrible pockets, and I don't agree with what the judges said. I thought the, if you actually looked at the pockets, they were absolutely awful. Uh, Rebecca, again, who's in the top... Um, sorry, excuse me, that's my, that's my telephone going off. I thought, oh. Alistair, it sounds like an old-school fax. I would half expect you to kick in and go beep 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 beep. Wah, wah. <laughs> it will well, it will sign off. Well, I'm not quite on dial up anymore. Um, <laughs> but then I thought um, Rebecca's um, was messy, um, which was interesting because Sienna and um, Rebecca they are usually in the t um, the top, and I thought that was really. Um, Adina, I thought um, not so sure, and Adam just a shame. Yeah, Rebecca, Rebecca messed up on her hood because she sewed it not the curve, she sewed it straight, so she had to do it again, didn't she, Sarah? She did, but she managed to fit it in. So, Sam, yeah. which was your which was your favourite? I'm just going to oh, press yeah. hang up it on this. It had to be. <laughs> oh, dear goodness me! It had to be the reversible because yeah. I mean, you know, think about were they using poppers for that as well? Um, yes, I think, he, I think he had press studs, yeah, I think, yeah. I'm trying to think. So I was just kind of figuring out how did you work that one out. I was very impressed with, with, with Andrews, I really was, and I think he should have won, not Farry, you know, Farrah. So, uh, Sarah, what did, you, what did you think? Who was your favourite? Um, I actually, well, I, I think next to Rebecca, I put clouds, red sleeves, I'd wear that, which I think, you know, that was like, so I obviously really loved that one. I thought Serena's was very all Achille, the pattern. So yeah. I, I, I didn't, um, I mean, obviously I'm coming at this from a sort of how it looked perspective. Adam had an absolute stinker this week, didn't he? Um, who did the shower curtain? Was that, that Damien? Damien? That was Damien. Yeah. I loved so, the idea, the execution was, but I loved the idea of having that shimmery fabric underneath it. I really thought it was lovely. Um, no. And I love the fact that they all, they all thought outside the box when it came to water, but they didn't just go for bog standard raincoat material, you know? In fact, I was quite surprised nobody used oil cloth. I don't know how easy that is to sew with, but like those poor, oil cloth. Can I just say, can I just say poor, poor Adam. Yes, we'll, we'll come to that in, in a second, yeah. Sam. How, um, how, how not to sew. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Bless um, so the winner... Fari, can I just say very quickly about Fari's? Um, it was meant to be waterproof, but that ponytail was going to bleed colour all over everywhere, wasn't it, afterwards? Which is what they, they loved, the ponytail. And all I could think was, where's the horn? If you're well, going to have a ponytail, <laughs> where's Alistair. the horn? <laughs> miss, miss, right, so just just on that point, obviously they thought the wow factor was this ponytail. Now, I would have given Fari extra, extra, extra points for you've got a hood. So the hood can become the main. So all she needed to do with that piece of weave um, was, um, sorry, if anyone doesn't know what a weave is and doesn't watch RuPaul's Drag Race, it is, <laughs> um, it is hair that people put into their own hair to give them extra hair. Um, and um, literally, if she had sewn that a bit like a mohawk into the actual um, crown of the hood, the execution would have been far, far, far better. And I think any boy or girl, I think, um, <clears throat> would have loved to have had a hood that had all of this sort of hair. And they could have um, plaited it and they could have yeah. done... I just think when you just saw it just stuck underneath the hood at the back, it was just like... A gimmick. Yeah, it's just like... It could have been, Alistair, could it not have been just far more My Little Pony? Yeah. Oh, I mean, think she could have had a pink comb uh, and it just would have been awesome. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, she, she did get it for the third time this week. I know. Um, 
personally, I think that um, Andrew should have won for the reasons that we just talked about. The fact it was beautifully sewn. Um, the colours he used plain fabrics, uh, which shows up every era. Even the top stitching was beautiful. So, personally, uh, and, and show of hands, who thinks that Andrew should have won? <laughs> Everyone except Sarah. Bless. Well, no, I, I just, I just want to wear Rebecca's clouds. But I'll tell yeah, you, you're the experts. You're the expert. I thought Andrew's was a bit boring, but I, maybe it should have been. Maybe the stripe should have been on the reverse. But I, but if you say that it was beautifully crafted, I'll take it from three expert seamstress people. We don't, we don't right? mind a little bit of you know controversy there. Um, so then we come mm. to the end, and unfortunately, it was the end of the road for Adam. Now we have all had Adam in our top three almost every week and he had an absolute stinker and I think the worst thing he did was not measure those poppers when he said I haven't got time to measure them if he'd have taken just two extra minutes he mm. could have saved a lot of that because you you both then this is my opinion you you guys really like Damien's I thought I thought it was a very clever but I thought it was shockingly so look at that collar He's got, no. the, Damien, Damien he's got the magnet to... that doesn't fit, which they loved, mm -hmm. but it's not even. And attached. also, magnets, magnets, don't they not work when they get wet? Well, there's, work the, there's quite a few things on that one. Yes, the concept of the idea was re, was was sort of there, using a lining and putting it in. Yes, that that you know that was what it would have. But there was just so much wrong. There was so many things. The, the fabric he chose to to use, well, we can't really we can't really call it a fabric. It was it was a whole. It was a sheet of plastic. Mm -hmm. That was what yeah. it was. It, it, it was, was it, it was a shower curtain. Now, when you're wanting to use something like that, there's a there's a whole load of other disciplines. One, the seams inside that thing, because you're actually using the lining, anything that is transparent, you'll see straight the way through. But how is he? Fi how did he finish? Or how do you intend, especially for children's wear? Because when you cut that plastic, that's quite um, tough, and that could actually cut. So, for instance, it, it, on many levels, it wasn't the right choice to make. Plus, also magnets and and things like that. I'm not sure. I'm I'll just say healthy, yeah. but it's for kids. Well, the thing is, remember. that hood, <clears throat> we all, um, you know, especially with my own son, when the hood isn't actually sewn onto the coat, if it's got a zip and it's a detachable, that is the worst coat. <laughs> because you come home from school and you go, where's the hood? Exactly. Oh, I don't know. It's in my bag. You look in the bag. It's not in my bag. And then, you know, it's... No. That hood would be stuck to the railing somewhere by the magnets, wouldn't it? It would just... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sarah, can I, Sarah, can I ask you a question? Do you think Adam, sh I mean, Damien, do, don't you think he's ready to, he gets away with murder? Yeah, I think he should definitely have gone because he came last in the transformation. He came fifth in um, the romper suit, you know, and he doesn't read the pattern. He doesn't follow instruction. And he said that. He said, you know, in the first challenge, and I know Adam had a stinker with that. And if Adam, I think if Damien hadn't been there, oh, sorry, if, if if Adam hadn't done so badly, Damien should have gone because mm. just he's just not up to it. Whereas we know that Adam is consistently amazing and we all have a bad day some days. So actually I wrote in my note, Adam, no, because I think, I think they've they've really lost somebody who could have won and they've left people in there who are who have reached their limit like mm. unfortunately Damien so what do you um, think about that Sarah what what are your feelings on yeah I, well I just think sometimes especially um when obviously it's not all people that can sew that are watching the sewing bee and Adam was a wonderful character he was a great he was great casting and um and Damien is uh, not he's kind of a bit forgettable for some reason I couldn't remember you know I had to be reminded when we were talking today and I just I, I thought like you said I thought Adam 
had a bad day at the office and he's had to pay heavily for that and it's a real shame because he seemed so he was very watchable and i think we'll really miss him moving forwards he's a very he was a very strong character out of all of the contestants and and it's just a real shame that he's gone but then historically we know that this happens on a lot of these sorts of of amazing talent shows and you think oh my goodness it's never going to be the same now x y and z's gone and then actually you just fall in love with another contestant the next week and you know we're fickle we'll be fine on that that front we normally have um our choice of top three and last week mine was adam barry and catherine and catherine went out so you see don't listen to me um alistair we had damon farry and adam and then sam had serena raphael and farry so if we start sarah obviously you've not been joining in with us who Mm -hmm. who do you think can go on and win i do like serena i think you know she it's all just so beautifully neat and tidy it just it speaks to the 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 uh, moniker from friends in me it really does it's just so everything's beautifully finished i really like fari um i thought you know again beautifully finished and um i just that the gorgeous materials that she's choosing they're absolutely wonderful as well and i do like andrew actually i did mm-hmm. love the crab um so those three for me coming at this from a real rookie perspective um but you know what you're right i probably would have had adam in there yeah had he not gone so so alistair in sort of 20 seconds who are your three this this week then going forwards okay so my three <clears throat> so i've got um sienna <clears throat> i've got Serena. rebecca yes um and i've got rebecca and i've got andrew however the two girls um well rebecca um i'm a bit on but because i had to choose three because obviously adam was going to still be there because i loved his romper i thought i didn't agree with um patrick grant at all i thought it was absolutely that could have been from betty bateau it was just it was really really <laughs> lovely um and um yeah i it will be interesting to see i just think yeah, it'll just be interesting to see. I'm just not too sure about um, contestants that don't consistently do very well in the th- in the thing. Plus, also, yeah. my thoughts on day. I know I put um, Damien one of the weeks in my top, and I just think when you look at his silhouette, he uses this three tiered look all the time. If you look at the transformation this week, it was that same. It was like the dress from the week before, and I think he's reached a ceiling and a plateau of what he's physically there to do so i okay. think he's probably in trouble next week i think right. okay. so sam what are your three very quickly this for, for, for moving well, i'm going to tell you something very quickly as fast as i can it will be serena um it will be andrew and i'm on serena andrew and i'm missing one let me just tell you something i used to say Raphael, ali um, alistair you're right He slipped up and said he sewed garments for Gay Pride in 2018. Do you remember him saying he only started sewing in the lockdown? Yeah. Mm. So I'm sorry, he is out for me now. Again, because he told a white lie, which you pointed out, Alistair. Well, we both kind of were suspicious. So it's um, what did I say? Serena, Serena Andrew. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to put Rebecca in there because I feel she's going to grow. I'm completely with you. That's my three as well, now that now that Adam has gone. So um, thank you very much, guys. Just a couple of things before we go. First of all, we had a little competition last week where we um, offered you four terms and asked you to put in the comments which one wasn't a sewing um, term and it's actually the the term that wasn't to do with sewing is kintsugi which is to do with pottery where they fix broken pottery with with gold veins and they they sort of keep it as part of the journey for the pottery so that was um, our little sort of chatty competition last week what we'd like you to do this week to get involved is it's been obviously fancy dress we would love you to share in the comments pictures of you guys or your kids or anyone 
in fancy dress outfits that you have made. We would love to see what, you're, what you've brought from your imagination. All of you who make stuff for World Book Day, all of that, that would be absolutely uh, fantastic. We would be, um, we would just love to see, because we're nosy like that. So next week is actually one of my favorite weeks. I love this one since it was introduced a couple of years ago, which is the Reduce, Recycle, Reuse because we're all trying to get away from fast fashion and make use of other things. So we've got a pattern is a gents waistcoat from secondhand clothes. Then we've got a transformation using army surplus to make a glamorous outfit for a woman. And then we've got old jeans to make into a made to measure dress, which um, is absolutely, uh, you know, that floats my boat completely. Really looking forward to that one. And then finally, I just, Less lost my other bit of my note. So anyway, um, but I want to thank uh, Sarah for joining us today to give us uh, your expertise on the child. Oh, front. thank you for having me. I love it. I just like soaking up the sewing vibes. So and it's been lovely as well to meet um, Alistair and Sam over the uh, virtual airwave. So thanks for having me, guys. Our pleasure. And we're going to have, you know, a few guests joining us with over the coming weeks as well. So keep an eye out. Really hope you have enjoyed um, the event today as we sort of pick apart behind the scenes and tell us who your favourites are as well, because, you know, you may disagree with us. That's that's allowed. Well, we'll see you next week for episode six of Behind the Scenes after we've all sat down and enjoyed the Reduce, Recycle, Reuse um, episode of The Great British Home Bee. We'll see you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.